Y'all folks country much? This is a 7.3, Ford 7.3 diesel. We're expecting the rear main seal to leak just because it's 7.3. Let me get these off and we'll see what it looks like behind that. Alright, I've got the, the plate off. The torque plate. People call it different. We do have some oil right there at that location. I'm gonna say I'm gonna change it anyway. We're just studying everything. I've got the new seal. Of course, this is gonna have to come off. I may raise it just a little bit because the motor is tilted toward me. This, of course, transmission's out. It's just sitting on the mounts themselves. So I think I will raise the engine just enough to level it out so oil doesn't come out the pan. Well, this area. Get to that in just a moment. I've raised it a little with the jack. I used a, a, a piece of wood there so there wouldn't be just metal to metal contact on the oil pan. Now, we have what looks like one, two, three, four, five, five small, look like eight millimeter bolts in a ring right here. The whole thing comes off. The new one comes with a wear ring. What happens over time is that seal actually cuts into the crankshaft with just grit and grime that's outside. That if it ever does leak, now you've got a lubricated surface and the grit, and it wears away a small groove, and the new seal will not seal as well. So the next thing will be to remove that and uh, prepare the surface for the new one. I don't know if you can read that. That says, "Do not pre-lube." And lots of videos I see indicate you should pre-lube. Uh, this one comes with a wear ring. It goes on in a different fashion maybe than the one you're looking at. This is most likely factory. What it does, ease a screwdriver in, flat screwdriver, gently. It may pop off, or I do not know. I had not pushed anymore. But she's fairly loose, and she's going to leak, but I do have a pan here to catch it. Not much, a little bit. So that's the old seal. We're going to kind of look at this a little closer. I do not see a wear ring on it. If there was, there would be a slight cliff edge right there. There's not. It's another piece of steel that goes on there that seals that. So I've watched some interesting videos about not a uh, not applying too much sealant here. You see how that's in there. That didn't go very far, but that's fine. You keep that to a minimum, and we've got to clean everything. In the videos, they stuff like, I've got some blue rags. They stuff some rags in there so while you're cleaning it, things don't go in the engine. It was also pointed out that this hole goes all the way through. And this one might. I'm not going to say it does or doesn't yet. I'll find out with a pick. So you might want to seal the head of that as you're tightening, tightening that last bolt up. Just so oil can't, can't creep the threads and come out. So this, uh, let me go get my stuff and I'll get her a clean up. I've now stuffed some of these little blue rags. You can get them in any part store. Just cut one in half and folded it till it would fit in there. And that'll keep any of this schmoo from getting in there, messing it up. I've got to clean all that off, get it clean. I want the mating surface really nice and clean where the gasket will be, gasket material, gasket. And then I'm going to try to find some really fine sandpaper and just, just smooth that up a little bit so we've got a little bite for the, uh, we'll use some Loctite on there. And I'll hear all kinds of comments that it's supposed to be a ring seal kind of special compound. It's getting Loctite. I started cleaning it, and because of this gap, I've just broken a, well, a nasty, gnarly hacksaw blade, and it works very fine. I put a little edge on it with my grinder. It works very fine for this project. Uh, there's no sense in having a special tool. This is something I probably wasn't going to use for a hacksaw blade anymore because it was so gnarly and coming apart. So we'll scrape all this off. Uh, clean it up real nice. We don't want any oil residue or anything. Make sure that we're not getting anything in the engine. That's 
that's what the rag's for. Clean all this up, and then we'll get around to putting, putting the seal back in just shortly. I did find some, it was suggested 600 grit. I've got some five. Just to polish around the crankshaft enough to get the schmoo off that's, uh, that's hung right here where the seal was not. That's his, that was the inside, which is shiny and pretty. And then outside, this is where gunk collected over time and just stuck to it, rusted a little bit. We'll get back to it as I get to the point of putting the, the seal in. I'll get it all clean and we'll go over this again a little bit. All right, we've got her cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to pick the rag out, show you what I've done. Made me a small rope out of that blue cloth that you'd just find anywhere. And just barely pecked it in there. Okay, like I said, I do believe these holes do go into that, uh, in the crankcase. I don't know about these, but what I'm going to do is, as I'm doing it, I'm going to make sure I've got just a little bit of sealant under the head of it, under the head of the bolt, okay? The seal was terrible. It's hard as a brick compared to a supple new one you can see. I don't know if you can see in that photo there, but the glazing on it. And, and how stiff it is, it's not supple anymore. If it wasn't leaking, it wasn't going to last much longer. I'll get it out. It's got a wear ring that goes, that slips on this. We're going to lock tight it to the uh, crankshaft itself. It was pointed out to me, and I never thought about it. I did over tighten these probably the last time. The thickness between the edge of that bolt hole and the edge of the crankshaft, if you over torque it, you will literally swell the metal out. So it's something to be aware of. This time I'm going to use a little Loctite blue, most likely, and torque it specifically how much. Everything cleaned up well. This rag has lacquer thinner on it. And if you notice, I got on glove. It was pointed out to me by another YouTuber some time back. When you're fooling with something that'll soak into your skin and lacquer thinner will soak into your skin immediately. Uh, the only way out is through your kidneys. You wonder why older people sometimes would have uh, kidney cancers and stuff like that. Well, that has to get out somehow. It got into your system, it's got to come out. It does not just dissipate into nowhere. So if I'm handling any kind of chemicals, this is for everybody. Wear a glove. If, if you don't have a glove handy, keep it to a minimum. And I would say wear a glove anyway. Stop what you're doing and go get some gloves. So all this is cleaned up ready. I've, I've lightly scored that just enough to put a little tooth in it so that the Loctite will hold the ring on like I want it to. Um, I'll get it ready in just a moment. Lightly do sealant around, uh, around the back of it. It'll look just like that. So where well, that's all oily and grimy right now. I'm not worried about it, but... I will have some sealant on it. There is a right and wrong way to put this on. The two dowel pins, right there's one below that hole, right there's one below that hole. As you put this in place, that dowel pin hole should be below, not above your bolt hole. They're a different size, and that's so you don't put it in backwards. So now we'll proceed. I'm using like I said, this automatic. You probably don't have this on a straight shift. I doubt it. I don't know you don't. But I'm going to use that to pull the sleeve, which is back in here, up. I've, I've aligned my holes with my dowel pins on each side. Allow me a moment here. That dowel pin is lined up right with that hole. And then we're going to use a small battery-powered impact to crawl them in. They make a tool specifically for this. I do not have it. I saw this method. We're, we're almost to the mating surface. I'm going to bring them in just a little more. That's bottom. Let 
Bottom. Bottom. Bottom out. Remove every one of those. And we'll see what we got. Hopefully it looks as good as it. I think it should. I held off on this for a long time because I want that tool. It could stand to be back a little more. We'll have to uh, find my hammer. It was a two hand process finishing it off. So I didn't get to film all that. I used this, it's just aluminum. And got it right on the edge of the wear ring and tapped it past the bevel so that it's flush. Once everything's on, all that's gonna be just like it needs to be. Now, all of these, I've got a little daub of uh, that black Ultra gasket, ma gasket maker under each of those. And that's because they'll, I know this is through, and this one's probably through, and the others may be. So that will help seal that off where the head touches. And you can see just the smallest amount of that gasket material come out. So yeah, this is not a fun chore. I wouldn't suggest it for the novice mechanic. Well, first of all, the transmission weighs about 200 and probably 60 to 80 pounds. All right, all that's good to go. So that should eliminate a leak from this area. That doesn't mean that this might leak. If any of these seven threes, if you got a leak in the oil or valley, it's coming out right here, running down here, you're gonna swear it's the rear seal. And sometimes it's not the rear seal. It's just simply where it presents itself. I hope it was informative and y'all appreciate it. Thank y'all.